My name is Daniel Bush. Your senators warn of nuclear attacks on America as Israel explores Syrian land. Coming up. Rebels warn they'll strike the U.S. Even weather forecasts are now used as a weapon. And why Syria is being called the last battle. Sixteen degrees in Homs means that 1,600 cameras for Saudi Al Arabiya and Qatar's Al Jazeera will be in Homs Town Square. Turn up, shout a rebel slogan for five minutes and get paid in cash by the Saudi US networks, which can then show this country's in chaos. Highly skeptical of the CNN and BBC versions, parliamentarian Nick Griffin went to see what Syria was actually like. He found it fairly different. This place is really quite normal. What do you think of this? How do you explain that? This is a war zone. But there is still a war being waged against these poor people, and obviously it has a human effect as well. Uh, having said that, I hope you've seen the last few minutes just how banal, just absolutely ordinary and normal most life here is. Nick joins us now. Great to see you. So whether Saudi Wahhabis or US-backed Al-Qaeda, is this foreign-driven? It clearly is foreign-driven, and it's most definitely Islamist. Uh, I did an interview with uh, a, a rebel uh, who was a suicide bomber, failed, uh, who still believed he was in a rebel hospital because of um, head injuries and so on. And so I asked him, posing as a, a British jihadi volunteer, I asked him, well, where are you going to go once you've conquered Syria? And quick as a flash, he comes back and said, we're going to attack Europe, we're going to attack America, because they're the real enemy. Yeah, what happens when Obama gets enough Congress support to bomb Syria? The US attack on Syria will drag in Iran, it will drag in Israel. Uh, even the Egyptians have said that they'll probably close the, the um, Suez Canal. Uh, if the Straits of Hormuz are closed as well, then oil will go up to, what, $400 a barrel? almost overnight, which will snuff out any form of economic recovery all over the industrialized world and plunge us into a depression which will go on for years. There's the incredible tensions uh, in the Far East between uh, China and Japan and again America. We look back on this and think, well, this was the summer like 1913. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Israel's bombed a Russian depot in Syria. Russia's moved warships to the region and called the biggest military drills since the Cold War. Moscow and Beijing held their biggest joint military exercises in history. Former NSA intelligence officer Scott Rickard joins us. Great to speak to you. What happens when one of these countries actually retaliates? Honor that uh, I believe Assad has, because had he retaliated at all against Israel, there would be an all-out war, and uh, he basically saved the lives of his people by not retaliating. What surprised me the most this week is you had McCain say they haven't retaliated, so we can attack them anytime we want. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm Irene. I'm Lisa. My name is Tom. I'm a graphic designer. College freshman. Stay-at-home mom with a full-time job. Scholar on social policy and a barista. And I'm just like you. I'm an Obama supporter. I support President Obama. But the president needs your help. Our president can't launch into another war without you. That's why we here at the Americans for Whatever Barack Obama wants, did you know he's friends with Jay-Z, have launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund World War III. And America is dead ass broke, so our goal is to raise $1.6 trillion on behalf of the U.S. government. That's where you come in. Even a small donation would make all the difference. A $100 donation gets you a day pass to leave your local refugee camp. You'll probably end up in a refugee camp, but it'll have free Wi-Fi. Why? Because Obama. Because Obama. <laughs> Senator Graham won't, if the US won't attack Syria, a nuke will hit South Carolina's Charleston Harbor. On the very same day, a nuclear warhead without authorizing signature was transferred to South Carolina. Now it's investigative site, StoryLeak. StoryLeak editor Anthony Gucciardi joins us. Thanks a lot for speaking to us. Nuclear war, this is another level. Senator Lindsey Graham is essentially threatening the United States, whether he got intel on this or not from another high-level source, elements in the government are now threatening us that if we don't attack Syria, there could be a nuclear incident right after they transported the nuclear weapon. 
They need something crazy. The chemical attack was not enough. We're looking at a potential serious false flag event to push us into this because Obama can't slime his way into Syria. There's no end game and we can't afford nor do we want a World War III. And speaking of that, Mr. President, didn't you win the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah, you are the one. Give it back. Obama previously admitted Syria isn't a threat or even strategically important for the states. Asia Times correspondent Pepe Escobar joins us. Great to speak to you. So who's actually gaining from Syria's breakup? That's very important to remind people all the time. The Israeli state does not have fixed borders. They are not delimited on a map. They can expand all over from the Sinai, from the Sinai to near the borders of Iran one day, you know. That, and that's the problem. This idea of Eretz Israel, Greater Israel, is the number one impediment. If they would sit down on a table to discuss Palestine, they will have to delimitate their borders. Finally, this is what everybody is expecting. They, can, they will not be able to annex people's territories anymore. Nothing is corroborated historically, in fact. This is a, let's put it this way, a wet dream. In the case of southern Lebanon, in fact, it's because of water. There's a lot of water in southern Lebanon, and Israel needs water. So we go back to, it's the water, stupid. This, is, this explains everything that happens in terms of Israel trying to annex southern Lebanon. Yeah, it's strange. We're now seeing those same dual citizenship politicians who pushed the U.S. into Iraq disaster back on our screens. The return from the living neocons, which never disappeared, Paul Wolfowitz came back dead like he was a, a Michael Jackson video extra this past weekend. CNN plugging, what else? What the least? Nothing has changed. The false flags and the, the you know, the, all those uh, crazy stuff happening 12 years ago in the run up to the war in Iraq. The difference now, it's crazier, mad, mad world, as we were discussing, much faster and out of control, because we know if anything happens in Syria, even Hessinger, had he said that many times, Syria is the fulcrum in the world. Whatever happens in Syria spreads all over. Spreading all over the region, unrest in Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Egypt, Tel Aviv's already granted gas fields in Syria's occupied Golan Heights, reports in Telehub to a company of Rupert Murdoch, whose media are currently banging Syria's war drums. The book Questioning the War on Terror notes chaos may be good for Israel's expansion, but the US just gains new enemies. The book's author joins us, Dr. Kevin Barrett. Great to speak to you. How can US policy be against its interests? Traditionally, the Democrats got more than two-thirds of the campaign contributions that flow into their federal elections from the aggressively pro-Israeli faction. Uh, and that was earmarked. With, you know, support for Israel was uh, the condition of taking that money. A clean break document was issued by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the uh, neoconservative, mostly Americans, who also happen to be dual citizens, uh, people like Wolfowitz and Pearl, uh, Scooter Lip, all of those people. And this document proposed uh, regime change in these Middle Eastern countries, uh, essentially overthrowing all of these independent Middle Eastern countries and imposing uh, imperial control. These people really do want to create greater Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates. Israel, working with its Saudi partners, uh, underwrote this coup d'etat against the first democracy ever in the 5,000-year history of Egypt. The indications are that they're going to keep stealing territory. Not only will they refuse to give back uh, the Golan Heights, but they're going to take Sinai. They're already creating all kinds of instability in Sinai. They came right out and said that what they want is three little mini rump states in Syria. Yeah, an Israeli general said Syria's part of a new axis of evil. Is that fair? Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the hardliners here in the U.S., uh, who are in the pockets of both parties, <laughs> primarily the Israelis, are the real axis of evil. But it's not going as Washington planned. Since U.S. invasion, Iraq's become a best friend of Iran. For two years, Obama has said Syria's president must go. He's still in place. And Middle East reporter Shamin Nawazi notes even the destabilization isn't really succeeding. Nawazi interviewed international doctors and aid workers in Syria who say there is no deep humanitarian crisis no real lack of food or medicine. Yet Common Dreams notes while Obama goes around the world trying to regime change, back home the streetlights don't work. Jamin joins us. Great to see you. Are people in the region actually grateful 
But what the U.S. president's doing. U.S. popularity was at 1% in Egypt because the U.S. will lose. The more the, the, its allies, who were just monsters, you know, Israel and Saudi Arabia and Jordan that can't even be called a state anymore. It's a parking lot for Western and Gulf troops, you know. Yeah, but surely a world superpower can get its way. It's a dead word, superpower. Um, you know, it, it just isn't true any longer. And um, uh, it's not a bunch of countries getting together against America. It's people wanting to live. You will never win against people who have more self-interest in tomorrow than you do. Uh, never. And we've seen this in every U.S. intervention from Vietnam on Iraq. You know, you have tribal Afghanistan. These are the last breaths of empire um, because uh, no strategic-minded um, uh, power ever reacts this way in, in such complex and, and sensitive situations otherwise. Backing the very same Salafist extremists who they were attacking in Syria and uh, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, this smacks of desperation and what I call short-termism because they're so eager to gain um, a win in any way, uh, shape or form, and looking at military solutions as the um, one-size-fits-all solution for all their problems. And uh, mentality of militarization does tend to permeate into one's society as well. Um, and, and you are seeing an undermining of freedoms and democracy in these countries, and you are seeing uh, the rise of uh, surveillance states in many of them too, you know, using the threat of terrorism, which is far less in any of these countries than car crashes or airplane crashes, to justify um, all kinds of surveillance on their own populations. Um, they're going to make mistakes, they're going to humiliate themselves. Um, there is always the last battle for any empire uh, throughout history, and I think that is it for, for the United States uh, and its allies. The end of this elite's imperial ambitions, notes veterans today, will first and foremost benefit the U.S. people, bring back their prosperity and rights, but growing numbers fear before the empire goes, it could take the rest of the world out with it. Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.